I'm Mark Hoffman, the Chief Research Information Officer at Children's Mercy. I'm fortunate to be a part of the Children's Mercy Research Institute. Our focus at the CMRI is to do research that can be translated from the bench to the bedside as quickly and significantly as possible. Our goal is to improve the health care of all children, both in Children's Mercy as well as widely, and we see research as the most important way that we can do that. We're fortunate to collaborate with Cerner, where we've received the Cerner de-identified data for research and use that data to support a variety of projects. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Jennifer Bickle. She will discuss her work in using the data to support neurology research. Hi, this is Dr. Jennifer Bickle. I'm a neurologist and a clinician educator at Children's Mercy in Kansas City. And when I first learned about Cerner's data, I realized that we had the opportunity to answer so many questions that we couldn't answer before. What I wanted to do was to be able to look at information that was meaningful to my patients in the real world and how they were treated. And so I and a team of researchers were able to use the data set to look at almost 15,000 patient encounters at over 180 emergency departments to answer the questions about how are opiates being used in the emergency department to treat migraines. And what we found is that about 23% of all encounters were associated with the use of opiates. And as you guys know, we want to limit the use of opiates as much as possible, especially in the treatment of kids and especially in the treatment of migraines, which can be treated in far better ways. So with my research partners, we were able to put this information together and publish it. But perhaps more importantly, we were able to present it on a platform at the largest headache meeting in the nation. And at that meeting, we were able to talk about how we've used different power plans, how we've used evidence-based clinical practice guidelines, and even changed our overall treatment models to get our use of opiates down to almost zero. We do believe that this will be helpful in helping to reduce the use of opiates in many other emergency rooms. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Kyler so she can tell you about the amazing work that she is doing with the Cerner data. Hi, my name is Kate Kyler and I am a hospitalist and researcher here at Children's Mercy. My research interest centers on how obesity affects hospitalized children. In particular, how children experience adverse events and safety events during their hospitalization. The Cerner data was a great tool for us to use to be able to answer our research question for a few reasons. Conducting obesity research is a challenge because most pediatric research data sets do not contain detailed height and weight information that we need to calculate whether or not a patient has obesity. And the Cerner data does contain that specific information for every patient. Secondly, we also needed specific drug dose and frequency information that was contained in the Cerner data. Examining several years worth of data in the Cerner database, we identified more than 21,000 children with obesity who were hospitalized with an asthma exacerbation for inclusion in our study. Overall, we found that children with obesity were more likely than children with a healthy weight to have received a steroid dose that did not adhere to dosing recommendations for children hospitalized with asthma. We found that overdoses were much more common than underdoses for children with obesity. And now I'm going to turn it back to Dr. Hoffman. At the Children's Mercy Research Institute, we recognize that children are often underrepresented in most research. We see a lot of value in working with the Cerner data because there are rural organizations, there are safety net hospitals, for-profit entities, non-profit entities, all of which are represented in this merged data. We also find value in working with this data because it's been aggregated over nearly two decades. And so we can also look at changes over time. I'd like to conclude by thanking all of the organizations that have contributed to the Cerner data. It's only by pooling our data and working together that we can do research that generates these important insights. 